Hello everyone, my name is Nargis Farzad and um, I normally during the teaching hours wear my hat as um, a teaching person and I also chair the Centre for Iranian Studies. I'm delighted to welcome you. I only wish that you could actually be at this event on a wonderful campus in a very vibrant, buzzing, energetic, beautiful corner of the magnificent Russell Square in Bloomsbury in London. And I hope by the time you join us, we will be back on campus. I'm delighted to have several of our colleagues and I think more colleagues will pop in and out. It is a teaching day and because of the different time zones, several of our colleagues are actually teaching till 6 p.m. till 7 p.m. London time, but I hope they'll pop in. I'm delighted to have Professor Wenchin Oyang, who looks after the Arabic section, Dr. Yorgos Dedes, who is the convener of our most popular in terms of numbers of our master programs at the LCL. And his talk will be afterwards. We have Dr. Kea Anjaria, who looks after comparative literature. She has a talk. Am I right, Kea? I'm not making promises exactly yet. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, Tomorrow. exactly. We have Professor Hugh Kennedy, an absolute jewel in the crown of the Middle East section of the School of Languages and Cultures. If you want to know anything about early history of the Islamic period and about your caliphs, then definitely need to read Professor Kennedy's books and wonderfully Dr. Donna Healy who looks after our uh, Southeast Asian department. Her own language speciality is Vietnamese and I should have said Dr. Dedes also looks after Turkish. I won't take much of your time. I think you know other colleagues will tell you that basically we wanted to invite you to join us to um, learn a little bit about the languages that we offer and how they fit in in other programs. As um, uh, one of our guests was already asking, almost all, not every single master's program, but almost all allow students to take a language um, module. It, this could be absolutely ab initio, just language that you want to start for the first time or it could be a language that you have studied at a certain point, you would like to carry on with it, or for heritage reasons, this is a wonderful opportunity to get us to study that program. And also, I wanted to tell you when there is a little, actually, I might do this very quickly while I have this screen to, to then, um, uh, I thought it's a good opportunity to alert you, if you haven't explored it, look at our scholarships uh, um, uh, page on SOAS website. I know, I think I actually recognize one name as an applicant, that um, uh, it's well worth looking at this. And the reason I flag it up, that most of the scholarships deadline is 2nd of April. So if you look, I mean, you know, I'm not going to waste your time, you can all look at it yourself. But you see, for example, we have the Comron Jam scholarships for MA Iranian studies and um, uh, the, the other, uh, you know, Shapurji Palanji scholarships for Zoroastrian studies, and many more. Some are subject specific, uh, some no are open to it. So I wanted you to look at that. Basically, if you just go to soas.ac.uk, and then forward slash registry, forward slash uh, scholarships, and you see it, or just search for scholarships. So let me invite, uh, I, I'll stop sharing this. And can I start by first inviting uh, Dr. Dedes to just, because he convenes our largest uh, master's program, and then we could switch a bit, maybe Dr. Healy, could tell us about Southeast Asian, and then we'll come to Professor Oyang, who will then tell you about Arabic, which obviously has a lot more choice um, uh, in terms of modules available compared to other languages. Would that be all right, um, Yorgos? Would you be happy to start? And I'll keep an eye on the Q&A as well. 
Thank you very much. Um, I will now um, share my screen. Have I managed to do it? And hopefully you can see this. I would like to say a couple of words about the MA in the Middle Eastern Studies, um, which is um, a degree that is offered in a pathway um, with intensive languages as well. The degree on its own, the MA in Middle East Studies on its own, can be um, a full-time degree over one year or can be taken part-time two over three years, which is standard. But the exciting aspect of the MA um, in Middle Eastern Studies and Intensive Languages is that you could study um, Arabic with entry at, a at an intensive pace with entry at various levels and Persian and Turkish with entry at beginner level um, as part of this intensive degree. And of course, um, we say the Middle East, which is exactly east of where and the middle of what, um, is an issue that, that would be very much central to your studies, I think, um, throughout uh, the degree. It covers quite a lot of countries, depending on, on, on different, of course, institutions. The definition varies um, here. You can briefly see um, the, the range of countries according to the Library of Congress uh, and its Near Eastern section. But as I say, different institutions um, offer different definitions. Um, uh, but we mainly focus on the um, area, of course, um, that is also known as MENA, Middle East and North Africa. So not just the core countries of the Middle East, um, making sure that, of course, Turkey is included and stretching um, um, as far east as Afghanistan, as part of the Persian and Iranian world and um, in the east and going all the way to Morocco in the west. Um, so the key feature of the MA um, is that it is an interdisciplinary MA and allows you, um, um, indeed asks you to combine at least three disciplines, which you can see listed here. Um, oops, apologies for that. Um, from anthropology to religion and philosophies, if you take them alphabetically in, in the name of the departments at SARS. And of course, it therefore has a very broad coverage, um, which even extends, um, as the Arabic saying goes, seek knowledge even unto China, um, unto Qin, which was of course mainly Central Asia at the time, but nonetheless, um, we encourage, and the degree encourages seeing links um, between different areas not just the Middle East. Um, so the ability to design your own, if you will allow me the, the native sort of Turkish um, metaphor, your own kilim portfolio of courses to make your own design is very much what is the driving force behind the degree. You have a maximum freedom to choose um, units from the list of guided options. In the one year full-time um, MA in Middle Eastern Studies, you have to take 120 credits of courses and a dissertation of 60 credits. It's all, of course, as now is the case, most of the courses being 15 credits, a combination thereof um, with any luck managing to divide your load equally between term one and term two. Um, the summary of the key features of the degree would include um, new as from the beginning of next year, the introduction of a core and a compulsory unit, a core unit, a core module that is of 15 credits, um, which um, is um, not just um, about the Middle East, but about all area studies covered in the languages and cultures department, um, and is of course very much geared towards um, introducing all students to how um, the study of different areas have certainly, has certainly moved beyond area studies. And another compulsory 15 credit course that is titled The Middle East and 10 Issues, all you wanted or didn't want to know about it. Um, but beyond those two, the one core and one compulsory courses of 15 credits, um, the, the key thing, as I've said, is the ability to mix um, um, and match your own courses, provided that um, you have also determined and decided on a choice of major module in relation to which a dissertation is written. Now, 
The last thing I will say before I hand the floor over to my colleagues is that this degree, like all, I think, the degrees that the Languages and Cultures and Linguistics Department offers, allows an open option up to 30 credits. That is, it could even be two 15 credit options taken from any other department's offerings of open options, which can be quite a big number of courses. But quite intriguingly and interestingly, I hope for all of you, the ability to take an open option means that you could even study a second language that is as part of the MA in the Middle Eastern studies on its own, not in the intensive track. You're allowed to study 30 credits of language, but as part of your open option, you can study a second language. So that is very much um, a, a, an added attraction, let's say, of, of that degree. Now, very quickly on the run about the Middle Eastern studies and intensive language pathway, um, the structure of the degree is um, fairly simple, but, but needs maybe perhaps some taking through. In the year, year one, you take 120 credits in total, 60 of which are in disciplines and 60 of which are in the, in the language you are studying intensively. In the summer of year one, you go on the summer abroad, summer abroad where you continue with the intensive study of the language at intermediate level. You return to SARS for your year two, for another 60 credits of discipline and another 30 credits of the language studied intensively. And of course, you also do 60 credits of dissertation. So the total is the somewhat unyielded total of 315 credits rather than the 120 plus 60, 180 um, number of the one year degree. But um, this I hope has given you a very brief um, outline of what is happening. Um, so, to repeat, we will, I will move the floor, I will pass the floor on now to colleagues um, uh, to talk about the other languages, but the languages, of course, that are the main languages of the Middle East are Arabic, Hebrew, Persian, and Turkish, and they can all be studied as part of the degree. And um, I will stop here and maybe come back later with more information well, about Turkish. Be before inviting Donna, because I know that she's sort of hopping in and out of uh, popping in and out of various um, sessions. Laura, could you kindly tell me very quickly if you're able to, um, if uh, can students actually, I don't know, is uh, Laura here? I, I think, oh, there you are. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, can a student switch their first and second choice of degree? If they've applied for program A as first choice and program B as a backup, but now actually would like to switch them around, is that possible? And um, we would just advise them to sort of contact admissions if you have yeah. already submitted um, an application. And that's one thing to say just briefly for anybody who perhaps hasn't started applying to SOAS yet is that you can submit one application per year and as part of that application you'll make a first choice and a second choice yeah. um, in terms of the courses so hopefully that gives you a better idea of what it will look like Thank and you. if you want to follow up then we would encourage you to get in touch and you'll have those email addresses once you submit your application. Brilliant that's fantastic I was worried that I've given the wrong answer. Donna can I invite you to tell us about Southeast Asian languages and how they fit into our master's program? Thank you. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Donna Healy, and I convene MA Southeast and Pacific Asian Studies program. Uh, this is a new program, which um, we originally had two separate uh, MA programs, but we have amalgamated them into one, uh, joining Southeast Asia and Pacific Asia. And for the purposes of this MA program, we define uh, South, uh, Pacific Asia as including obviously Korea, China and Japan. Um, obviously, you know, this is a very exciting uh, area, uh, region to study. It's a very diverse region with a fascinating mix of cultures, languages, religions and traditions. And obviously it's also an extremely dynamic, fast developing region that is assuming an increasingly important strategic role in global affairs. So um, many of our students obviously um, uh, actually go into the region and uh, my own expertise in Vietnamese studies, you know, I can uh, certainly um, encourage everybody to study Vietnamese studies because, you know, Vietnam is really uh, 
an up- upcoming uh, area and uh, for example it's a strategic uh, partner of uh, Britain and there are really many potentials to actually use your expertise. Um, I am not going to repeat, uh, you know, the sort of formal aspects of the program because, uh, you know, the the structure um, of uh, all our MA programs is, uh, you know, similar. You know, you have the dissertation and then, then you have to have the uh, uh, prescribed number of credits. Uh, in terms of languages, uh, on this program, uh, you can study um, on the Southeast Asian side, uh, we offer Burmese, Thai, Indonesian, and Vietnamese. And on the uh, Pacific Asian side, we offer Korean, Japanese, and Chinese. Um, of course, I want to uh, just uh, stress that not all languages are taught every year. Uh, you know, so um, we would obviously have to check with us which languages are going to be running. Um, and then obviously uh, we have uh, compulsory modules. Um, uh, we obviously are encouraging students to take some of the literature and film modules that are based in uh, the School of Languages and Cultures. And then obviously you go and select the other modules from uh, our departments, uh, discipline departments, depending on what is your major uh, interest. Uh, you obviously then uh, select a um, uh, module from that particular area. Um, so uh, the combinations obviously include really all the departments around so us, so anthropology, art, development, studies, uh, um, economics, um, really depending on, on your interests. Um, we have a new core module, uh, which is called Remapping Area Studies in Asia, Africa and the Middle East. Um, uh, so all students on, on this program will have to take this module. What else can I tell you? Um, obviously, you can study this program uh, uh, either full time or you can obviously uh, study it as a part time uh, version, either over two years or even over three years, which gives you a little bit of freedom, especially if you are already working and you want to obviously uh, follow this program uh, while also, you know, um, working. Um, we always design this program uh, with a uh, high level of flexibility because we really want to allow students to put together uh, you know, the program in a way that actually reflects their interests, but also their career sort of plans. Uh, I think that's probably all as a way of introduction and I am obviously happy to take any uh, questions. Wonderful. Again, I see we have four colleagues from the Arabic section. So before that, if they would indulge me for a couple of more minutes, I thought, Kayo, could you tell us just about how languages fit into a MA comparative literature, please? Obviously, a crucial element if students would like to take it up. Okay, yeah, so um, I think like um, most of the MA programs in our department M uh, for MA comparative literature, you can you can take 30 credits of a language, um, but we also offer really a sort of an array of specialist language courses that are either sort of bilingually done or, um, or in translation. We also offer sort of disciplinary courses and as well, which are not language specific, not region specific. But if you are interested in doing a literature intensive degree, um, and making comparative literature can um, can accommodate you as well. Um, although not to say that we're in competition with the other programs. Yeah. So <laughs> as you wish. No, yeah. Well, anyway, competition is healthy. <laughs> but of course we support each other. So, so wonderful. So I have, um, Professor Oyan, Professor Hugh Kennedy, Mr. Mohammed Saeed, and uh, Dr. Nada Elzir here from Arabic section. The presence of four colleagues alone lets you know that we Arabic department is quite large. So I don't know how you would like to introduce it. To, I'll leave it to whoever speaks first. Well, shall I start off? Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, yes. Yeah, so if you come in, mean, and when you need to unmute you, so you you decide yeah. whether well, two professors. So, should I do a quick PowerPoint uh, to show the kind of uh, modules we have, courses we have? Should I do that? Let me do yes, that. Sure. Why not? Yeah, you could do that. Uh, the only thing is, uh, how do I do this? Okay. On top, so, uh, how do somewhere. I play this? Right on top, top, top. Normally, there is. Um, I don't use. Is this slideshow? Slideshow. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And then now you go start. Yeah. Okay. So very quickly, um, I think uh, I want to tell you more something about the Arabic. Um, courses, the study of Arabic um, at SOAS and particularly in sort of the two-year MAs, MA uh, discipline and intensive Arabic. Uh, you have heard from my colleague, both Dr. Dedes and Dr. Healy about the structure of the program. So I will not you know, go over that, but you can see, see it in front of you as well. Uh, um, but for Arabic, uh, because Arabic is, uh, is relatively, uh, uh, large, uh, you can enter into, into the program through multiple entry points. Uh, and we, before you, you, you are placed into to, uh, an Arabic module, we give you a placement test during the welcome week. So for, let's say, MA, XY, discipline and intensive language, you can enter as a beginner or at the intermediate level or at the advanced level. Um, we, if you enter at the beginner's level, uh, you will do uh, uh, right, Arabic one in term one, Arabic two in term two. If you enter, uh, sorry, uh, sort of the pictures are in my way, intermediate level, you'll do either Arabic 3A, 15 credits or, and B, right? Or Arabic 4A and B, right? Um, and you'll, right, so these will be 30 credits and you need 30 more credits. So you do classical Arabic, about 15 credits, and then Arabic dialects, 15 credits. Um, or you can enter at Arabic 5A, right, um, Arabic uh, and Arabic 5A or Arabic 6, the more, most advanced level A and B. And you can do with the, these uh, translation and language based modules, right? Um, or Right, you can also do, uh, sorry, I moved something. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, you, you can do uh, translation projects which are at various levels, which are 30 degrees, uh, 30 credits. Um, and here is the list of our, Arabic modules at SAAS, on your left, you see the language modules, Arabic one, 30 credits in term one, Arabic two, 30 credits in term two, Arabic three A, 15, Arabic three B, right? 15 term, terms one and two, and we go up to Arabic A, uh, Arabic six uh, A and six B, right? And we ha also offer language-based modules. Uh, the most advanced level is practical translation from Arabic 15 and into Arabic 15, or we have the translation projects. We have modules like Quran and Hadith studies, reading classical Arabic historians, which is taught by my good colleague, Professor Hugh Kennedy, and politics and aesthetics in modern Arabic literature. And these are modules, right, uh, taught, right? with reading primary texts in Arabic. To we a good point. I, I'm yeah. conscious of this. Destination uh, and for summer, so just a second, for, sorry, sorry, for summer abroad, so far we have two destinations. You go between mid-June and mid-August to study Arabic for eight weeks, right? One destination is in Amman, Jordan, a Qasid Arabic Institute. And I have provided the link here so you can look up the place. And the other one is a Najah Arabic Institute, which is in Nablus in Palestine. Um, so that's it for now. Brilliant. Thank you so much. It's glad you put that. And of course, yes, you can uh, uh, um, get in touch with us for other Yerubu destinations. You know, um, Persian will be in Northeast Iran. Turkey, I think, probably has Istanbul and maybe... 
um, Ankara as well. I don't know. So I'm conscious of the questions building up. We will come back to your questions. So Professor uh, Kennedy, you were going to uh, tell us something. Yes, I was just going to follow on from what my good colleague Wen Chin Yang has been talking about, the structure of the courses and so on. But to say that one of the things that you're open to you when you come to ZAIS is looking at a rich culture of classical studies in the various languages. All the main languages we're talking about, Arabic, Persian and Turkish, are very rich classical literatures which have developed through the centuries and are very important to the culture of, 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 of those countries and so on. What we can do here at ZAIS, which other institutions maybe can't, is to give you the opportunity to look at some of these classical civilizations and see not just what's being spoken and talked about now, which is, of course, very important, very central to lots of people's concerns, but also the rich tradition that lies behind it. And I think that's something, you, because uh, we're a fairly large scale operation, we can offer that richness and diversity that possibly other universities can't. Not that I've got anything against other universities, of course, but it's just a thing. <laughs> Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, and can I invite Nada and uh, Mohammed Said as well, please, to just tell us about um, your, your, Arabic, your cl Arabic classes are quite large, aren't they? With uh, um, especially a main intensive Arabic is a very popular pathway, and generally you have quite um, a lot of master's students joining Arabic courses, aren't they? Yeah, Mohammed, would you perhaps you could? I don't yes. know if Nada can no, hear me or not, you. but yeah. Uh, now, uh, after my uh, two esteemed colleagues, uh, there isn't any more to say except about the placement test mm -hmm. uh, for uh, students, applicants who have a background uh, in studying Arabic. The placement test usually takes place during the registration week. And what we are looking for in the placement test is the learning and the, uh, you know, the background in learning Arabic as, as a foreign language. It's not enough to have you know, traveled in the Arab world or you can chat in Arabic. We want to see how much you learned in order to allocate you to the right level. You can see from what Professor Oyang listed, we have six levels and we, we want to be careful not to put somebody in an easy level nor in a higher level. So the placement test is a serious test which takes place in the registration week. And it's better if students come to it unprepared because if prepared, they might show a kind of a false level. And we concentrate mainly on seeing uh, how much modern standard Arabic they know. It's not enough, as I said, to, to, to be able to speak Arabic. It's a modern standard Arabic level they have achieved during their previous studies. Yeah. Uh, I think that's enough, my colleagues. I think that would be, yes, and we can always come back there. I, just, I want to intercept by answering two questions here. One is from Scott, who asks about travel, once the travel restrictions are lifted about, is it safe to, um, where, and when it is safe to travel for passion. Uh, Scott, one of the things that we should have said that we have to follow the, mm -hmm. Uh, FCDO's advice, so the Foreign um, and Commonwealth and you know, Common Development Office. Now, uh, it doesn't matter what nationality you have. It doesn't matter what passport our students travel on. It doesn't matter whether they can go from, say, Spain to the destination. If the British Foreign Office restricts travel to that destination, you will not be allowed to go. And of course, with a country like Iran, we're at the mercy of the visa being issued or not. For Iran, when hopefully when everything is um, going well, we have chosen the Ferdowsi University, it's sort of almost second or third largest university in Iran, in Mashhad, in northeast Iran, for a whole host of reasons. Uh, weather is better. Tehran can get quite polluted in winter. It has a nicer campus, a more, you know, uh, held together campus rather than scattered over a mega city of you know some 18 million residents um, and very easy to travel you, you know our students who've gone there they take the overnight train to Tehran if they begin to pine for parties and raves and so on uh, so at the moment it's a mashhad but you know I assume you know politics of Iran make um, 
uh, travel occasionally difficult. We have other ideas we are exploring. We have had a student that went to Tajikistan, but we don't have a contract with a partner in Tajikistan. While most of our partners are scattered around, we actually have a you know agreement with. But it's a, a moving feast that we visit. And there was another question I wanted to ask from Iria that you were asking about demographics of our students, postgraduate students. Are they professionals? Absolutely. We have retired ambassadors who would now like to catch up with their postgraduate studies or because of the region they have served in, they want to study at Lent. We have, as you said, students who may have worked for a few years after their first degree and students who have followed on immediately from an undergraduate degree to a postgraduate. It, it, the spectrum is massive. And when you arrive, you will see that there is quite a mixture, very global, very international. So it's mixed. So I'm going to stop the questions. And I was going to invite Alice to tell us, give us some inside information, dear Alice. Tell us what you have been studying at SOAS. Hi, um, so I'm Alice and I study Arabic. Um, I just wanted to give everyone like a brief, quick overview of sort of what the course is like. Um, I went in from a complete beginner. Um, I'm, I am currently an undergrad, but my class um, that I'm in is a mixture of undergrad and postgraduate as well. Um, but yeah, so I'm on the intensive Arabic and going from a complete beginner, now looking back um, in the last two years, I've been able to, you know, write my own work in Arabic. I've been able to um, sort of have conversations that I was not having at the beginning. And I think if you sort of put in the work and you're willing to set aside those hours, um, the progress really does pay off. And it's so good to um, watch your progress and um, also with the modules sort of using your knowledge of Arabic in other modules and it makes everything a lot easier once it strings together. Um, but yeah, so any, if anyone has any questions about um, like specifically that they want to know, then please put them in the chat and I can uh, try my best to answer. Wonderful, that's fantastic. Nada, I can't know, Dr. Elzir, can you hear me? I can't, I noticed that you're- um, Yes, there you are. yes I, I can. I just wasn't sure oh, whether no, my no. colleague was going to take the question that's or not. Right. Yeah, no, we, we could do that. But if uh, what about you've been teaching Arabic for a long time here at various levels, and I think um, a, um, a master's students. Yes. So, just any insight, anything you'd need to flag up for our- You, you asked about the size of classes yes, earlier. Yes, so yes. The, the plenary, so we have two types of classes. We have plenary lectures and we have tutorials and the plenary lecture is what everybody would be together. But the tutorial groups are quite small actually. You can expect between 10 to 15 uh, students. Um, what can I tell the MA students? Uh, usually our MA students do very well. Yes. They, yeah. yes, they, they certainly enjoy a lot and um, they achieve a high level and many of them will already have uh, done Arabic before so they will be placed in another level. Some of our MA students are currently in the highest, uh, Arab, highest level Arabic module that we offer even though they are just in their, in their second year. So, yes, so we are able to accommodate all levels and they all they all manage to do very well. Fantastic. Yes. For some other if just to, um, for other non Arabic modules, usually they're beginners and intermediate uh, courses. However, if you have if, for example, you have done BA, whatever, Persian or Turkish or um, already and you might think the modules available are not uh, advanced enough for you. Of course, in Turkish, you could consider doing Ottoman, for example, or there are modules called, for example, directed readings, which then allow you to use the language um, expertise that you have acquired to focus on text. These are usually sessions where you have a supervisor and you agree what you are going to focus your reading on, and then you write an essay. So you use the, uh, material in the targeted language. I would like to invite colleagues now to answer some uh, questions. So if I start with one, Dr. Dedes, for you, you mentioned Middle Eastern studies allows students to take two languages. Yeah. Have you already applied to Anne? 
I oh, haven't replied. I, I, I clicked by mistake the answer live, which yes, is know, just as well. I but tried I mean, it, Dan, and, then, and it disappears. Very and, um, But I, I can tell Anne, if she's still here, that yes, is, um, yeah. whether the uh, degree allows you to take 30 credits of language as part of the language, so to speak, entitlement, and a second language is up to the discipline degree. In the MA in Middle Eastern studies, you could do that. But in an MA in Migration and Diaspora Studies, I don't think you would be allowed to do that. You would be allowed to take a maximum of 30 credits of language for that MA. Now, if you're talking about the MA Migration and Diaspora Studies and Intensive Arabic, then of course, as part of your Intensive Arabic, you would study more than just 30 credits, but you would still not be able to do um, 30 credits or any credits in another language as part of um, that combination, diaspora, migration, diaspora studies, mm -hmm. and intensive Arabic. Yeah. So I'm afraid that option would not be available if okay. your discipline degree is in migration and uh, diaspora studies. Absolutely. A question, very pertinent question uh, from Shabz Ahmed. I'm glad you typed that in. That you say in respect to an MA with intensive language, can I please ask about the costings of the summer intensive program? Uh, it, this is a two year full time program, so you pay the, the uh, fees, which is usual one year times two. So it would be whatever, whether it's a home student or overseas student, it will be times two. But the summer program's fees are included in your. Uh, the fees that you have paid. So you do not pay the university because that, that you've already done it by signing up for the two year in, uh, full time program. However, your living expenses at your destination is, is um, up to you. There are some languages that have foundations that give travel grant. It very much depends on what language you choose. Some destinations are very, very cheap if you're spending hard currency. For example, Iran is incredibly cheap. Some destinations, for, you know, Japan, for example, is, they are not, relatively speaking, in terms of living costs. But you don't pay an extra fee for your summer abroad. That's already part of the two-year uh, fees that you pay. And... Um, uh, Neva um, Bullier, I don't think, or maybe Donna has been answering you. Um, I don't know if Donna has or not. The, hello, I'm looking to apply for MA Anthropology in Intensive Languages. From my understanding, not all the languages are available every year. How, when will we be able to? Very soon, Neva, I very much hope that usually by the end of this term, which is in two weeks' time, but you know, the world is turned on its head. So, it may not be till during the Easter vacation or certainly in term three. So towards the end of April, we will have a list of languages that are, um, uh, are on offer. Not every single language that we offer at SOAS offers um, an intensive thing. I think Yorgos can, um, or Donna can correct me, am I right? Not every language is available as an intensive, uh, as a two-year yeah. intensive. Yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, it, it depends. I mean, obviously, most of our languages are taught and run every year, especially, obviously, the large languages like Arabic uh, and obviously the uh, East Asian languages, etc. But from some of the smaller languages, uh, African languages or so Southeast Asian yeah. languages, uh, we may not be able to run uh, every language every year. So we already know what we are teaching next year. Um, so if I speak just for the Southeast Asia, then uh, we will be teaching Indonesian and Vietnamese, and we will not be offering Burmese and Thai next year. That obviously does not mean that we are not going to teach these languages, but we are not offering them next year. That's right. And sometimes some colleagues, you know, teach several languages. So if that colleague goes on, a, you know, sabbatical leave, research leave, you know, various languages can get paused. In the uh, Middle East, as Dr. Dede said, Arabic, uh, Hebrew, 
Persian and Turkish will be offered next year. For South Asian languages and African, I recommend you visit the website. Jack Champion has a question. I'm not sure. Actually, Kaya may have answered this. Um, flexible language module option. Have you answered, Kaya? So I don't need to read it. Oh, no, I did the same thing oh, and yes, hit I the wrong it's button. So, <laughs> so terrible. It's catch that. So Jack asked that uh, I'm excited about flexible language module opportunities. If you have lived in a specific country for some time, is it easy to change your module to match your current level? Yes, Jack, for that part, if, if the language at that level is available, Jack. So for example, if it's in Arabic, absolutely. As Nada said, you know, from complete beginner to advanced almost native speaker, some other languages, no. But the, again, the opportunity of look out for directed readings. I know that we have it in the Middle East department, which allows you to use the language at the level you have. And you also said, uh, also any modules in any classical or literary Japanese available this year? I suggested we are, it's very strange that the Japanese, Chinese, Korean are not housed in School of Languages and Cultures and Linguistics. Do check the website and please write. So they are in the School of East Asian Studies. So I urge you to write to uh, find the convener of Japanese or Chinese and ask them, but they usually are. Last time I checked, there are classical modules in that. And in Can fact, I just come in here? Please, please. Sorry. Also, just to say that if you're interested in doing something across the two departments, there are three programs, cultural studies, MA cultural studies, MA comparative literature, and MA post-colonial studies, which actually allow you to do languages in East Asian languages and cultures as well. So, um, so if you did want, for example, a focus on the Middle East and, and Arabic or Africa um, and so on, but you also wanted to take a, a module in Japanese or two, you could, you could do it that way. Um, so the, it's not totally cut off, but the, the obviously our language-based area studies here are, are catered to our department. Fantastic. A question from Caroline before I go to Hawa. Um, uh, from Caroline for Dr. Dedes. I'm yeah. interested, uh, did you answer? I'm yeah. interested I, in I have not answered, but I can quickly tell you, Caroline, yes, I'm pretty sure the MA Religion and Politics does allow 30 credits of language, mm -hmm. so you could, you could engage in study of Turkish, yes, or okay. indeed any other language you wanted, okay. but certainly Turkish too, yeah. But brilliant. How were you all said? Can I be considered for Cambron Jam Scholarship in Emre Social Anthropology and Intensive? Yes, I think for if you have the Persian Intensive Persian, yes. Um, so normally uh, at master's level, it's open to um, in the religions, it's when you do Zoroastrianism, but definitely put in an application. It's highly competitive, but if it is with the Intensive Persian, yes. We have had um, a students who've applied from history and intensive Persian, um, history of art and intensive Persian. That allows you, 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 you are qualified for that. And Roman asked, in the certificates in languages, um, do these all begin at complete beginner level? Would it be possible to join an intermediate? For some of our certificate programs, yes, um, because there, uh, there is an intermediate level um, so again, I suggest that if you know, I know for Persian that if you are at an, you know, uh, intermediate, upper intermediate level, again, as uh, Mr. Mohammed Said said, there will be an assessment of your level. Um, uh, you can do that, then there will be a language use module. And Dr. Dedes, tell me, what were you going to say? I'm sorry, sorry to have interrupted. Yeah. I just wanted to say, that we normally recommend people who are considering a certificate to think seriously about possibly doing an MA instead. They usually are well qualified for it, um, um, either having had an earlier degree and it may be worth their time. The dissertation is of course um, a little bit extra to requirements um, in this case, but um, completing all the courses of an MA allows you to end up with a postgraduate diploma, which usually is quite um, suitable um, and indeed is actually preferable to the certificate. 
So, um, Andrew, you may want to consider, and I'm happy to talk to you separately or whatever, the, the possibility of doing the MA in the languages you want and so on. Exactly. Um, and, and, the course, and the fees are the available same. Available level would be possible. Yes, and the fees are the same. So, uh, am, am I not? Yes, I think so. There is no. Yeah. Um, um, Ira, can I ask roughly how much time studying modern standard Arabic students will usually have had to do to start the intensive Arabic MA from an intermediate level? Um, which colleague would like to answer? I, I, will, I will answer this. Yeah. Uh, it is the equivalent of uh, our 60 credits, i.e. the equivalent of a full academic year of kind of eight to 10 hours per week, a full academic year between eight to 10 hours per week. That is equal our 60 credits in the first year. That will put the applicant in the position to be okay in level three. Of course, uh, some applicants are faster and they can accumulate faster. So the placement test might, they might think they are going to level three, they may go to level four. But anything less than the equivalent of 60 credits uh, is difficult to join uh, level three directly. Fantastic. Thank you, Mohammed. Uh, Scott, your question. I'm, I'm actually, during this holiday, I am going to uh, review what other destinations we might have. Tajikistan, obviously, there is an element of the script, or we would like our students to be immersed fully. So the script is in Cyrillic. But in Dushanbe, you absolutely will learn Persian. And the classes uh, that are run, you do both Tajiki Persian and Farsi Persian. In terms of, um, uh, by all means, write to me separately. My email is n for November, f for Freddy, number numeral one at SOAS. And I can tell you about resources. And um, uh, uh, this was um, to, in order to improve your level. And if you done some, and what level will you reach? Well, our current uh, MA X uh, with intensive person who are not completing their second year. So unfortunately, they could not travel. The summer gone, they were not allowed to go to Iran. As you can imagine, after China, Iran was the next hotbed and continues to be. In fact, Iran is not allowing anyone traveling to uh, the country, especially not with the virus in Gilisi, with the English virus. So uh, if you are going from here. However, as you quite rightly say, it depends how much private study you do. They are almost at advanced level, despite the fact that their summer was online with, you know, just online teaching. So you really, you get a lot of bang for your bucks when you do passion. It's already you know, an Indo-European language. And especially if you put in your hours, you will get. I very much hope we can go to Iran, um, but um, we'll see. We'll have to, you know, um, look in our magic balls and see where the virus is going to rear its head next. Um, and um, what else? Have I left any questions? Like colleague, have I missed anyone out here? And did you, um, Dr. Dedes, yes, you referred to Anne, you replied to Anne. In translation, yes, and I think I uh, replied to Sean that um, the level for MA translation has to be uh, advanced. Uh, so not pitch perfect, but you really uh, are, should be able to translate all sorts of materials. In fact, I'm sorry that I understand that the MA translation masterclass was running while we were here, but please do write. So Burchin, Dr. Burchin Mustafa, visit the webpage. You, you will see, uh, and I believe there is a level specified for the, um, I think um, the name has slightly changed. The name of the module is Practical Translations from English into a uh, something language. While, while you uh, look it up, we've just changed the name of some modules. But you do need to be at lower advanced, I would imagine, certainly upper intermediate. 
Sorry to interrupt Nargis, but um, the next session is actually about to start. Oh, so I'm so think sorry. We, you we've all, all been right. having such a good time, yeah, really. Right, <laughs> so please, you've met us all. You'll find us on the website. Do visit the website. Fire off email to all of us. And if we can't answer, we'll pass you to the uh, right person. It's such a crazy time, end of term. You might have to send your email twice before we you know, come up for air and do it. So do not forget Dr. Yogis Dedes, Dr. Donna Healy, Professor Wenjin Oyang, Professor Hugh Kennedy, Dr. Nada Elzir, Dr. Kay Anjara, Mr. Mohammed Saeed, and your most obedient faithful servant, Nargis Farzad here. Do stay in touch, please. And if I apologize if we missed out your questions. Do send them back again. Um, and you popped Nargis's email in the chat if anyone wants so it. And if you can't find where to send it, my email is there. Feel free to send it there and we will make sure that it gets to the right person in the department. Absolutely. And Laura will make sure we reply. She'll be an unforgiving <laughs> uh, master <laughs> disciplinarian. Make sure we answer. Wonderful. Enjoy the rest of our events. You may leave this. And if you're interested in the Middle East, do follow Dr. Dedes in Ita and head to his talk. And Dr. Anjara tomorrow. And have I missed any other SLCL um, uh, masterclasses? Do, do check on our websites. I, I think that's it. I think, I mean, the, uh, Africa has been done. South, oh, South Asia follows this as well, I believe. So do, do come back and visit our other events and hope to see you on campus for the final event. Bye-bye, stay safe and take care. Thank you, Laura, thank you, everyone.